Well, Files, to ask you how your 2023 was, uh, noting you've still got a few hours left to perhaps change the answer, uh, I wonder what you would say. Did you achieve your goals for the year? As you sit here this morning, do you feel more like the person that you perhaps wanted to become at the start of the year? Or maybe you're kind of relieved this morning that uh, at the end of the day, you'll be able to draw a line under this year, thinking, thank goodness that's over. Hopefully, we'll have a better time in 2024. I suspect for most of us here, 2023 will have been a mixed year, like many years. Ups and downs, successes and failures, good and bad, all thrown in together. Well, as we approach uh, 2024 at an alarming speed, we have a chance, don't we, our world tells us, and uh, something about it uh, makes our minds trick us, that uh, we've got a particularly new, fresh start arriving tomorrow. And I wonder uh, if you've turned your mind to what 2024 will bring for you. I wonder if in the craziness of Christmas, or perhaps since we've been able to breathe since Monday, uh, you've spent any time thinking about what 2024 might bring for you. Maybe you've made some plans, set some goals, dreamed some dreams, chalked up some resolutions, or perhaps that's this afternoon's job uh, as you wait to ring in the new year. Well, as we move from 2023 to 2024, uh, and as we think about uh, new beginnings, I want to just uh, pause this morning and help you to frame your thinking uh, a little bit more theologically than psychologically about what you hope to get from the year to come under God. And I I've got sort of four frames from which I, I want to help you view the year that is to come and view whatever plans, dreams, goals, uh, habits, etc. you might be trying to work on for the coming year. And those four frames are new beginnings, certain future, difficult present and supernatural presence. New beginnings, certain future, difficult present and supernatural presence. And I can tell you, one of my resolutions for the new year is to be a better preacher and make those all start with the same uh, uh, letter going forward. New beginnings, certain future, difficult present, supernatural presence. Well, new beginnings. We all get that, don't we? We all know that uh, a new year is coming and uh, it is a, a remarkable psychological kick. Perhaps it does nothing for you. Maybe I'm some sort of a strange beast, but there is something about the new year that gives me kind of a, a, a little bit of a, a pep up and a, a, and a drive to kind of think about uh, uh, how I'm going to live differently or things I might like to achieve or change uh, or plan. And so I, I think it's good when we have that kind of uh, thing happen in our regular life that we make the most of it. However, we need to remind ourselves that that feeling we get as 23 turns into 24 is actually uh, the kind of feeling we can have every morning under God. Every day, we get a fresh start with God. In Lamentations 3, we read these words, chapter, uh, verse 20, starting at verse 22, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God's love, grace, mercy and compassion, his faithfulness is available freely to each of us each and every day. Each and every day... You get a fresh start with Jesus. And Paul talks about this in his letter to the Corinthians, his second letter that we have uh, to this, still to this day. In 2 Corinthians 4.16, he says, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. 
And he goes on in chapter 5 to say, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. It's a transformative experience following Jesus that uh, brings renewal and fresh beginnings in the grace and mercy of God day after day after day after day. And of course, we need to remember this because I guarantee you what's going to happen when you make all your plans is you're going to fall over. You're going to fail. You're going to miss your, 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 your milestones. And worse than that, you're going to do things that disappoint God, that disappoint your brothers and sisters in Christ, that disappoint those most closest to you. And it's then you need to remember... The faithfulness of God, his mercies are new every morning. Great is not my faithfulness, but his faithfulness. Every night is New Year's Eve. Every morning, New Year's Day with Jesus. We get a new beginning every day with him. So that's the first thing I want you to keep in your mind as you think about uh, what may be to come in 2024. I also want you to keep in mind the certain future that we have with Jesus. See, it's not just that we get a new start each day in Christ, in his grace and love and mercy, but we also have a guaranteed end point. That's what our reading today was about from Revelation 21. In Christ, we look forward to the new heaven and the new earth, to the time when God dwells with us and where everything is as it should be, when all is made new and right and holy and perfect. To just refresh from our reading this morning, from Revelation 21, verse 3 to 5, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He was seated on the throne and said, See, I am making everything new. There's this great promise for us of a destination made for us in the grace and mercy of God that we get to because of him, not because of us. We simply need to trust God and what he's done for us in Christ and what he will do when he comes to make all things new. We get to this beautiful picture of uh, uh, the heavenly city with God living with us and death and mourning and crying and pain being done away with. We get there how? By drinking from the well of the living water and putting to death sin. That's what... uh, God, uh, Jesus goes on to say in Revelation 21, verses 6 to 8, To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this. I will be their God and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all the liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulphur. If you like the fresh start of the grace and mercy of Christ that is available to you each and every day in him. Just think this is like a foretaste of eternity where you'll be in perfection drinking from the water of of life with all who love the Lord Jesus and are worshipping him in perfection forever. And the road is to today start living a life of repentance and faith Trusting God's ongoing faithfulness, his ongoing forgiveness, love and mercy and in response to all of that overwhelming us in Christ, putting to death what puts us, takes us off the path to God's guaranteed future. Sin. And that those things that are listed there in Revelation. We repent and trust the good news of Jesus and we have a certain and sure future. So we get a new beginning every day. We have a certain future because of what Christ has done. But we also have the reality of a difficult 
present. Just because we get a, God's faithfulness is new every morning, and just because we have a certain and sure hope of the future in Christ, it doesn't mean that life's going to be hard, not going to be hard or difficult or tough. 2024 will not be easy. In Romans 7, Paul talks about his struggle uh, to live as a Christian. And towards the end of that chapter, he says these words, although in verse, uh, starting at verse 21, although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to be God? to death. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. The story of scripture is that you and me as we live our life on this earth will be continually and constantly impacted by sin. We heard it uh, read from 1 John this morning. If we claim to be without sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. The truth is, you will fall short of God's standards. You will make mistakes. You will do things that you regret and that bring dishonour to God. And if that's not bad enough, you're also going to have to face the battle with Satan every day, who's going to try and make life difficult for you by whispering his lies, telling you things that your sinful heart wants to believe. Jesus describes him in John chapter 8 as the, a liar and the father of lies. And he's going to be at work each and every day trying to make you believe that God's grace is not sufficient for you, that God's mercies are not new every morning, that God's future is not sure and certain in Christ, and that you are pathetic, hopeless and weak, and you might as well just give up now. And your sinful heart might be inclined to believe it. But it is not true. It's the lie of Satan. And if that's not bad enough, you've got your own sinful heart and flesh working against you, you've got Satan whispering lies in your ears, well, you've got to live life in this world too. A world that's going to seek to draw you away from God every chance it gets. 1 John 2, we read these words, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father but from the world. Our sinful flesh, Satan's lies, and a world full of shiny things to take us away from God. They're all going to be active and at work against us as we seek to be faithful followers of the Lord Jesus each and every day of 2024. It's going to be tough. But even to sinful humans who believe Satan's lies and follow the desires of the world, God's grace and mercy are still new every morning. Christ's love never fails. God's future is still certain. And so as we plan and hope and dream, we just need to be realistic that we're in a battle and that it's going to be tough that we need to seek God's help and that we make plans and dreams and visions not to be the best version of ourselves so that we'll, the world will look at us and think, what a great bloke, but so that we can be people who die to self and live for Christ, who bring honour and glory to God. And that ought to shape and frame our hopes and dreams for 2024. Well, lest I've make, made it all seem too uh, hopeless and tough, that's why we have our last frame, the supernatural presence of God that is going to be with us throughout 2024. God has promised 
to give us his spirit to help us to die to sin, to say no to Satan's lies, to say no to the, uh, the things of this world and to live for him. Romans 8, 14 uh, to 17 comes right after Paul's described this battle he has with sin. He says, those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. God's spirit reminds us, helps us, makes us know who we are in Christ. It is his spirit that, that reminds us of our identity in him as God's children we're not defined by our struggle with the world we're defined by who god is and what god has done and who we are in him because of his grace love and mercy not because of anything we've done we need to have that frame right as we go on uh, living our lives as christians god's spirit also speaks through god's word to make sure that we live in the truth and not in the devil's lies. Paul describes it in Ephesians 6 in that famous passage about the armour of God, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We need to be living in the word of God if we want to be believing in the truth of God. Otherwise, the only thing we're going to hear are the lies of Satan. God's Spirit reminds us of who we are. God's Spirit works through God's Word to remind us of the truth about who God is, what God has done, and who we are in Christ. And then God's Spirit empowers us to live for Jesus, even when it's hard. Even in this world full of sin, the Spirit produces in us fruit. As Paul describes in Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, peace and forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the sorts of things that God produces in us as we live for him in this fallen world, awaiting our certain and sure future. So, I wonder what your hopes and dreams or fears and worries are for 2024. Whatever they may be, let me encourage you to frame them up right. To frame them up under God. And to make your goals, dreams, hopes God orientated and not self orientated. And as you do that, keep in mind God's ongoing faithfulness to you day by day. The certainty of your future hope, if you love the Lord Jesus. The reality of the spiritual battle we're in against sin, Satan and the world and God's empowering presence working in us by his spirit. I wonder how those things will help shape your year to come. Well, as we finish, uh, I thought I'd just take a moment to reflect on the year that had been and to uh, 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 kind of lead us into the year to come. And as I've reflected on my own year that has been, uh, I, I've been struck by uh, Romans 8.28, a verse that says, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. It's a great verse. It's the kind of verse that you take out of the Bible and you pin up on the wall and that you lean on in troubled times. And obviously, as I've shared from time to time over this past year, uh, the, the start of our year was a little bit rocky, uh, dominated by those interactions that I had uh, at the school. Uh, and uh, as we got to Easter, of course, it all blew up and we, we changed schools as the principal and I decided we'd perhaps rather not see each other anymore. But of course, through all that, 
God was exceedingly gracious and kind, leading us through that time to a new school with new opportunities, uh, all things we never would have had if it weren't for making the move. 2023 started off as a very bad year for us, but ended up being a great year. God works for the good of those who love him. But do you know what? It might not have gone that way. It might have just got worse and worse and worse. Though I can say that my year reflects in something the truth of that scripture, my little story is actually just an illustration, if you like, of the big story of God's work in the world. Because no matter who you are, no matter the devastating news you may have received, no matter how long it takes, no matter whether you achieve your goals or not, no matter what comes your way, God will work for good, all things for you. Because we know where we're headed. We know what the future holds. We know what Jesus has done and we know the promised future of Revelation 21. So, in light of God's faithfulness and goodness, in light of his victory over sin, Satan and death, and in light of his promise of an eternity spent with him, I wonder how you might I wonder if you might start 2024 thinking about these questions. How will I be faithful to God with my life in the coming year? How will I die to self and live for him in the coming year? How can I make more of the gracious good things God has promised to those who love him in the coming year? And let me actually say that rather than asking yourself those questions about the coming year, just think about today. For the promise of God is actually that his mercies are new, not every year, but every morning. And I actually think one of the problems that we have as people is that we don't make things micro enough and there's a whole book I'm reading at the moment and you've probably already read it called Atomic Habits uh, and it's got nothing to do really with spirituality but just about how you change things but I think the reason it works is because it's reflecting the truth actually of the scriptures which is we're not to live with big plans for the future we're just to live with faithfulness in each and every day. So maybe rather than asking yourself those questions ask yourself these. What does it look like for me to be faithful to God with my life today? How can I die to myself and live for Christ today? How can I make more of the gracious good things God has promised me today? Because I guarantee if you live each day like that, You'll have a great 2024, however much of it any of us enjoy. Because every day is a new day in Christ. And one day, Christ will return. And all your dreams for yourself will be dead and buried. And all that will matter is whether or not you've trusted in him. And if we have we enjoy that certain and sure hope for the future. We're going to make far more progress in the here and now while we await for that return if we take our lives under God one day at a time, faithfully seeking his glory for as many days as he may choose to give us, trusting that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Amen. Amen.